morning, it's Randy T-Bird. And I am recording, cool. Randy T-Bird out here in hot and humid Arizona. It's about 6.30 in the morning. Um, we had a big monsoon storm last night. Get away from this truck. And uh, it blew like crazy, dust, dirt. It rained all over the valley, except it did not rain at our house for the uh, fourth time this monsoon season it went all around us and we got a few sprinkles enough to make the cars look bad but uh yeah cooled it off just a little bit but uh man the day after the humidity is up there we're like swampy like like atlanta or or florida right now it's been a really really hot week and the one teens all week uh, it's kind of hard to describe when you have high dew points in the 60s or even 70s with 110 or 12 or 15 degrees. It's been pretty brutal. And uh, although next week it's uh, going to cool down a little bit, but it's going to be raining all weekend. The guy it looks like a Yamaha star. It's uh, Anyway, more weather next week. Hopefully, uh, we'll get, actually get some rain at the house. Uh, our uh, yard needs it. We cut down on our water bill a little bit. Been a brutal summer. But I just wanted to get out this morning before it gets to be really hot. It's supposed to be 101 by 10 a.m. this morning. So, I'll uh, be out for a short ride today and uh, uh, be back home before that happens. Uh, got some plans for later today. Uh, it's a good thing to have uh, air conditioning in your car out here to have a good air conditioning. That is one thing about my car is the AC works really good. So yesterday uh, we started at 7 a.m. in the morning uh, recording uh, my band's uh, new CD. Uh, it's all covers. Uh, it's more of a demo so that we can get more shows, but uh, it was a really a lot of fun and uh, it was a good process. Uh, everybody enjoyed themselves and uh, yours truly made many mistakes. It caused uh, retakes, but uh, it all came out good in the end and we're really looking forward to the production and the editing of it this, this week. Should have it by next weekend, should have the finished product. and. Uh, Kirk Hawley is the engineer and uh, fellow musician uh, I've known for a few years. He did our second album with Brotherhood of Blues. And uh, he does a great job and he's uh, very patient, which is important with my band because it's, uh, the band's name is not Hurting Cats, but it should be. But anyway, it was fun. And uh, I'm glad we got that done. And uh, now all it does, uh, when you record, if you're a musician, you know when you record, all you want is more. So we're probably going to do a volume two of this CD when it's done. Because we went in with 15 songs, left five of them on the table that we never even got to. So lots of fun. Back to rehearsal next week and uh, try to learn some more new stuff. Anyway. Kind of a hazy morning. There's a lot of dust left in the air from last night's uh, massive uh, dust storm. Uh, some areas of town got a lot of rain and uh, blown down trees and whatever. You know, in other words, Arizona monsoon season. So, now yeah, I got some water on the side of the road here. So it looked like it rained over here. This is not four miles from my house. I like the 202 this time of the morning, or the 101, excuse me. Just not much traffic. You can relax a little bit and uh, not have to worry about the people coming in from every direction. Uh, merge the lanes, because it does break off into another freeway here, the 202 freeway, and it gets kind of kind of crazy at times. Uh, Jim from My Motorad, thanks for the shout out in your video the other day, I appreciate it. And Blues Heart Biker, if I did not uh, thank you for the sticker last week, I am this week. And uh, it looks really good. And I'm glad you got mine. So I do have stickers. If anybody's interested, uh, you have to hit me up. Uh, the best way to uh, 
to uh, get a hold of me is to DM me through uh, Instagram and then I'll be happy to send some out to you to trade stickers. Uh, it's uh, actually, if you look at my channel, my channel intro, that is the sticker. It turned out really good. Uh, my, my buddy at Wookiee Style Tattoo did the artwork for me and uh, he knocked it out of the park. Although I'm probably going to have to update it since I don't have the heritage anymore. But it should be just a matter of uh, changing a few things. Uh, I may come up with a different idea for that. But I do like the Arizona state outline border. So we'll, we'll, we'll keep in that thing. But that's, that's, that's a project for another day. Hope everybody's doing well. Uh, see from the traffic on Instagram and everything, everybody's getting out. And that's good. Man, there's a lot of haze in the air today. That, that dust storm was, if you've never been out here, it, it, it's almost hard to describe how the dust gets out here. Sometimes we have a wall of dust that, uh, ever seen that Mad Max movie? Uh, the, uh, the latest one, Mad Max thing, the, the one out in the desert, and you see that wall of dust that they go into when they're in the chase scene. I mean, let's face it, that whole movie was a chase scene. But uh, that's the way it gets out here sometimes. When I was a kid, um, there wasn't as much uh, building around here, and the dust storms would hit almost every night in the summer. Because uh, you had the farm fields and just the open desert, and it would pick up quite a, quite a cloud of dust. And... Uh, really send the big ones up there. You can watch as you're coming in from the south uh, east a lot of times. Um, you can watch the, literally the mountain disappear as it comes over the mountain and then uh, starts, uh, as I call it, eating the valley. And, uh, and you watch and then when it gets close enough to where you can't see down the street, then you go back in the house so you don't get coated like a cinnamon donut. Speaking of cinnamon donuts, that sounds like a really good idea. We'll see when I stop. Probably not the best choice for me food-wise, but you know what? Uh, you know, I, I am uh, not going to be going to the Olympics or anything this this time. So, you know, a donut ain't going to kill me. At least not right away. Street Bob running good as always. Really digging that new air cleaner. It just gives it a great sound. A little intake, uh, intake uh, roar or honk or whatever you call it. Man, you can really feel the humidity out by these uh, farm fields. There's a Class A house right there. I thought about going out through the reservation riding down those roads. Those roads are pretty rough and, and a lot of them, they go just a few miles and dead end, so, uh, and I'm not really sure uh, which ones do and which ones don't. So, might might uh, explore that here one of these days. Looks like a couple of failed farms right here, cattle pens. Farming is a hard life. They're out there working on a Sunday morning with the tractor. Looks like there must be baling hay or something. I don't know. Me not being a farmer, I could only guess. Past the cheap cigarette place. Well, relatively cheap. Man, I don't know about you, but construction in, in our area, it seems like everywhere they've got the roads torn up and then they've got the logical detour route torn up or the road that connects the two torn up you just it's uh it's crazy it just seems like there's no communication between the state and the county coming up on almost school road and a traffic light out here that's unusual to get stopped anyway. I'm not sure how far almost school goes down the road there, but I know it's probably hard to get back to the 
87 once you get on that road. Again, one of these days I'm gonna have to find out. Maybe when it's cooler this winter. You have to really mind your P's and Q's when you're out on the reservation because they are their own police department and their own uh, traffic rules and uh, I've heard that the, they're uh, notoriously uh, vigilant about enforcing speed regulations and stop signs and things of that nature so you got to be uh, you got to be a law abiding to ride through there because uh, you go to one of their courts and I know this from experience from many years ago uh, they uh, are somewhat intolerant of breaking the traffic rules or the rules in general in their areas I remember back when I was young I was riding in an area which is uh, pretty much all town now on my dirt bike and I ended up riding through uh, the desert and having a good old time and out of nowhere bounces a police truck and I'm like a police truck okay what's it doing out here in the desert well they pull me over <laughs> if you can pull over a dirt bike okay um, uh, the dirt bike uh, gets pulled over guns drawn you know I'm just a kid you know and I'm just having a good old time and I was reading a ticket written a ticket for trespassing and I'm saying trespassing where where even am I and they said well did you see the signs and he points to the ground and there's a sign right next to my bike laying face down I said well there's no, the sign is not visible and they didn't care so I'm being all outraged as a young man can be and I signed the ticket and pushed my bike back into what was not reservation which they so uh, uh, diligently pointed out to me where I needed to go back right away and uh, so I had a court date. I drove, which back then was like out on the edge of the reservation. It was a place called uh, Gila Crossing, which was no more than a wide spot in the road with an official building. And I set a court date. I show up for the court date. And I walk in and I said, I'm here which for my uh, trial. And the lady behind the desk, the bailiff or whatever, they're called says well the judge isn't here today he's out fishing I said well I have a court date and she says well you can pay the fine I says but I don't want to pay the fine I want to have my day in court and she says well you can pay the fine or I can call an officer and uh, arrest you and then you will go to court when the judge uh, gets done fishing comes back from his fishing and that could probably be Monday or Tuesday. So not wanting to spend three or four days in the uh, reservation cell, which didn't sound like a good time to me, I ended up paying the farm, the fine, and uh, it wasn't a lot and everything, but it just uh, it was an interesting turn of events, and so not really happy with that. To add insult to injury, I had a 650 Triumph, and I'm riding back down this road in the middle of nowhere down by Sacaton, Arizona and I hear this god awful clank and then the bike bucks and kicks up into the air I didn't crash but I had literally lost my entire front fender fell off the brackets broke it fell off and I ran over it and uh, surprising I didn't crash there was really nothing useful left on the fender at all three out of four mounts were broken it was twisted and torn up and uh, uh, the sad part of about it, I don't know if anybody's uh, done old English bikes or whatever thing like that, that there was a company called Wassel that made the coolest accent, uh, accessories and it was an aluminum Wassel shorty fender that it was on it and uh, now it was a watered up piece of uh, road debris. So that was that was the icing on the on the day. But that's an old story from the early 70s. I'm pretty sure now that uh, the place that I was uh, riding back then is a uh, city street now. So, needless to say, I really never went back to that area.
Yeah, the haze is from the dust settling is really, really bad. And there's still fires out there. The guy in a dual sport out this morning, he's probably already been out and headed home. Not a bad morning, all things considered. Again, like hot and humid, but uh, you know, later on it'll be intolerable. You will not be able to uh, really even be out unless you're very hardy. And uh, honestly, everybody I see out on bikes in the middle of the afternoon when it's 110 plus just seems really miserable. Or they have no choice and they're just going to go. Riding at night isn't much help. It doesn't get under 100 degrees till probably 11 o'clock at night, if at all, in some areas. Man, look at all that garbage. I guess that's from the wind. It must have been blowing the top layer of the landfill around. It's everywhere. That's frustrating. looks like fog out here it's so hazy it's not what do you all think about this new Harley that's coming out this week uh, I guess the leaked word is it's gonna be called a Sportster S and it's got that new 1250 revolution motor in it I'm looking forward to seeing that I guess it's Tuesday when it comes out um, I don't know that uh, it's gonna be my cup of tea but uh, one of the things I saw, there was a cheater photo, uh, a sneak or a leaked photo of it out uh, on the web this morning I saw, and it has this, uh, the same style headlight that the uh, Fat Bob has on it. And uh, I'm not crazy about that, that rectangular headlight. Uh, call me crazy, I think motorcycles should have round headlights. If you remember back in the Back in the 70s, if you were riding back then, and these guys would put these triangular headlights on uh, on bikes and uh, on the front of springers, and there's stacked headlights. And I remember some of those were quartz halogen headlights, and they were incredibly bright. Not as bright as some of these uh, LEDs that are out now. I have LEDs myself. Uh, but they had a, a bright blue light, and it almost felt like, and they created heat like crazy. You know, the LEDs don't really create the heat all that much, but uh, these uh, HID headlights would really create the heat. But I remember guys that had Triumph choppers loved these triangular head headlights because uh, they uh, kind of match the uh, timing cover on the old Triumphs. So I was never really much into choppers. Uh, I like them. I prefer if you're going to have a chopper, it's more of a an old style, outlaw style chopper that had a, was more of a bike built to ride, not the bike to, you know, to wobble around to the, to the billet bar in Scottsdale, so, you know, which doesn't exist anymore, so I should probably not bag on the people there that, uh, it used to be during bike week, these guys would wobble around on these big wheel choppers and, uh, and, uh, that was a real popular place for that. But, uh, some of those bikes you never saw except during bike week. You see them now on Craigslist for sale for uh, a fraction of what they cost new. Yeah, it's each his own. I've always liked modified, customized stock bikes, stock uh, frame bikes. Uh, that still maintained uh, the general uh, engineering of the uh, of the people that actually make a living doing that. So, come to find out over the, over the years, uh, the uh, the engineers uh, they pretty much know what they're doing. Um, sometimes they get overruled by marketing, and some other questionable things get done. But you got to think that the engineers are shaking their heads. At, at those and thinking, God, I had a great, I had a great thing going, and marketing decided that it needed to be uh, chromed and kicked out or something. But uh, again, that's that's the world, and uh, to each his own. 
That temperature's cooling down a little bit here as we go a little bit farther away from town. Well, anyway, I'm going to be rolling in to get some gas pretty soon, and this is Randy T. Bird out here in tropical Arizona. Thank you for all you subscribers this week. I appreciate it. We passed 581 as of this morning. That is incredible. I've, this has been a great month for subscribers. I appreciate it so much, everybody that's done that, and thank you for sharing my videos. Obviously, that's getting done because uh, more people are subscribing, and to the folks that uh, that uh, messaged me and asked me about uh, different products and whatever, uh, thank you for the uh, the interest. And in, uh, no, I don't get paid by anybody or get anything free. Uh, but uh, I do enjoy talking about motorcycles and I am happy to share my experiences with anybody that needs to know. There's no such thing as a dumb question. Unless you're going to ask me if this is a Suzuki or something and then that, then uh, then you just need to learn how to read. Anyway, Randy T-Bird out here in Arizona. We'll talk to you soon.